Hi guys, welcome everybody. It's Alvit here from the Daraxa ecosystem team. And we are going to, to walk through today with a very simple Foundry example that you guys can use to figure out how to develop smart contracts on Taraxa. Now, as you guys may know, Taraxa is natively EVM compatible. What this means? This means that basically you develop the same smart contracts with the same Solidity versions. We are running the same um, EVM on our chain. Therefore, um, let's not waste any time. Um, let's go into seeing what Foundry can bring us. Now, Foundry is probably the most widely used smart contract development framework right now. Therefore, I wanted to start with this one to show you guys what you can do and how you can do it exactly on Teraxa and the differences that you guys need to need to take into consideration when developing on Teraxa. You guys can see like a very detailed readme here. This repo is publicly open and available to the public on the Teraxa project GitHub. So feel free to clone it, to use it as inspiration when you are actually developing your smart contracts. Now, I listed here a very important difference that you guys need to take into consideration when developing and interacting with Teraxa. Teraxa is not supporting EIP-1559 right now. What this means is that we are still requiring the same old RPC transaction fee format, not the, not the newest versions. So whenever you are running any tool, possibly you will need to run it with the legacy flag, like on Foundry. Now, this simple setup that I have here consists of a, a demo Tara deployment script, a demo Tara smart contract, which is an extension of an ERC-20 that simply does an action. It is able to mint to a certain address from the owner a certain amount of tokens. Now, for the ease of development, I wrapped this foundry setup into a pack, uh, package.json so that you guys can use your favorite package manager. Probably most of you guys are anyways coming from uh, from, the, from a JavaScript background to basically do anything that you require to set and also register widely used commands and scripts. Cool. All right, let's deep dive into it. Probably you guys know that the life cycle of a smart contract is First and foremost, you need to implement the smart contract, then you need to test it, then you need to deploy it, and after that, you need to interact with it. Uh, now, of course, we advise that you guys should always thoroughly test, but this is not going to be in the scope of the presentation. However, we will see how to deploy and interact with this ERC-20 on the Toraxa testnet. Cool. So on Foundry, you basically have a lib that pulls in all the helper smart contracts that you can see in the for Forge standard source library. This is the source code that you are going to, to use to develop your smart contract. All right. Now, we wrote this simplistic smart contract. Now, what we want to do, we want to deploy it. In order to be able to deploy it, we are going to need three pre prerequisites. One is a private key of a address that contains at least enough Tara to deploy on the testnet. Then we need to define the RPC URL where, where we want to deploy or where we want to interact with the certain smart contract. And then of course we will need the address of, of the smart contract. Uh, this is already coming from a prerequisite run. We will change this so that we keep it live and you guys will see it now. Let's go back to the package JSON. Of course, before uh, being able to uh, to deploy, you will need to build your source code. You can do that by using the forge build command, or you can just run yarn build with, with this setup that I prepared. However, if you forget this, it will detect whether you have different new changes that require a build before you run either a script or a deployment. All right, if you take a look at line number four, you will see a <laughs> very long command here. Now, this can be simplified by wrapping the deployment inside the, inside the uh, Solidity native script. What this means is that you need to implement a contract that is extending the for standard script.sol contract. 
and you just need to define a run function and everything that happens here is very simple solidity so as you can see we are just importing from our uh, environment our private key you, then we start to broadcast with that private key so that the transactions are actually coming from the address of that private key we initialize the smart contract and then we stop broadcasting cool so let's take a look at the package json that we have we have this this uh, script command here that simply says for script takes the script that I just showed you, targets the testnet RPC URL with it in a legacy manner, and then broadcasts it, which means it's not a dry run. So basically this smart contract is going to be created on the Taraxa testnet. So now let's run this. Great, so it has very detailed uh, feedback about the gas it is requiring, the estimated amounts that is it is going to take, and then it's also checking whether this run is actually succeeded. So as you you can see, like it was waiting for the for the transaction receipt, and the sensitive values are safe. It created this broadcast deploy demo tara dot s dot sol slash eight forty two, which is the chain ID and the script's name and then inserted inside the run latest the the contract address and it was also visible here so yeah it's very hard to miss now let's go to the package json and change this smart contract call here now inside this sample call function as you can see we are using another very cool feature of foundry which is cast so cast is uh, an underlying cli functionality to do rpc calls via foundry to uh, an rpc node and it's of course, deliberate to say that we are at Teraxa exposing an RPC endpoint for all of our networks free of charge. So you don't need an inferior account or an Alchemy account to, to be able to interact with the, with the Teraxa network. Cool. Let's try it. As you can see here, we are just asking for the total supply of the contract. And yeah, let's do it. Cool. It returned 1,000. Where is this thousand coming from? Well, it is coming from this line, which said that we are minting to the creator of the contract, a thousand demo tar. All right, now, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed it.